Hi there, I'm Josh Finn from J&H Aerospace. Today we're going to answer a question that I've been getting a lot of about the past year as we have transitioned into using these indoor free flight supply propellers that sometimes arrive with um, some minor issues uh, regarding the, the blades. So these are very, very lightweight propellers um, and they're capable of very good performance. Uh, however, if they get stored in a hot place, uh, they have a tendency to arrive with a blade that's curved off. And um, also, since the blade's very light and flexible, it's easy to get into some vibration issues. So I'm going to show you a technique today uh, that's very simple. Uh, first of all, we're going to show you uh, some implementation with these propellers, and then we're also going to show you how to fix uh, what happens when uh, when you've got a blade that's twisted a little bit uh, or bent back a little too much? A uh, very simple fix that you can do to correct that. So on these uh, propellers, the, the main issue is that the spar only extends out a little ways on here. So what we can do is we can effectively increase the length of the spar. So we can take a piece of carbon and we can lay it in here and glue it in place such that it extends the spar out. Now you don't really need to go quite this far out, so we're going to cut off a, a shorter piece, um, about, I recommend about three and a quarter inches long. I've got two of these. These uh, would be within the, uh, the scrap material that you would use or produce making a typical Science Olympiad plane. So um, they're just the O30 carbon that we normally use. You can use scissors or a razor blade to cut these. So now we have a pair of these uh, stubbed uh, carbon reinforcing spars, and so we're going to start on the side, on the blade that's not been impacted by the uh, the warpage. And I'm not going to lay it all the way um, at the root of the blade. I'm going to extend it out a little. It doesn't really matter. You can. Um, you can put it all the way there. It just, uh, I think this provides a, a more balanced result. Um, alternatively, if you really are proficient at it, you can actually pop these apart and mount the, uh, the blades on full carbon spars, but that's a, a little outside the scope of what we're doing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of CA here, and we'll go from there. So the, the glue is soaking in pretty well, um, as is typical though. Let's see, we still need a little more. This is actually thin uh, foam safe CA, and so it does wick along pretty well, um, but not as well as some. But also the plastic tends to inhibit the, uh, the hardening a little bit, so it needs a little kick with some accelerator. And now we have a very stiffened up blade. So if you, if you look at this, you can see I can tap on this and it stays put, whereas this one still flops a little bit. So we're going to go over to the other blade and we're going to repeat that same process. And so if I hold this blade with my finger stabilized on it, or if I were to weigh it down flat on a table or something, I can get it to maintain contact all along its full length with this stub, uh, well, spar extension that I'm putting on it. And my goal, of course, is to not get my fingers involved in all that. But this one is sticking pretty well. And so now, if you look from the side profile, let's see, there we go. Um, you can see that both of these blades are swept back a little bit, but that they maintain a, a very similar shape there. So if I sight down one of these blades in comparison to my prop shaft and bearing, you can see I, out at the tip I have about that angle. I'll actually show it. 
So I've got that angle. And then if I rotate this assembly around, pulling the same way, so everything's vertical here, I have a very similar pitch angle. And so now these blades are fairly evenly matched in that regard. Now let's wipe all the liquid off. It's very important we do that. Um, it's also important that you avoid using too much liquid because this plastic can soften up with uh, the accelerator. The next thing we want to do is this, this propeller can still vibrate pretty heavily, so we want to make sure that it's balanced. So if I, if I hold this, um, I'm holding it by the prop shaft, not by the bearing, and this one actually, now we've got one blade, you notice, is consistently falling towards that one. So I'm going to take a small amount of my... Um, sticky tack clay and by now of course I have forgotten which blade it was and it was that one so on the blade that stays up we stick a little bit of clay on there and that may have been too much it was so it's just a very small amount and now Prop seems to kind of just want to balance wherever, and that means it's actually properly balanced. And it's still falling towards that one just a tiny bit. It's uncommon for them to balance out with just that tiny little bit of clay. Um, by comparison, the propeller on my other model, you can see, has, has quite a little piece of clay right here. The last thing I want to show you is um, an installation method for these propellers. So there's two ways you can install them. One is if you just have your regular motor stick. Uh, if there's any tab down here to provide clearance for an aluminum bearing, you would want to take your razor blade and remove that tab. You want the bottom of the motor stick to be flat all the way across. Then you can come in here with the, this is the, so the motor stick is held upside down. You can just slice in here with your razor blade. So you've made a slot within here. Um, and I'll show you how far in the razor blade went. About that far. And then you can take your propeller assembly and just slide it in like so. The wood will split apart a little bit and that's okay. Now, this does not provide you necessarily any thrust line offset. You can bend these bearings a little bit. You may have to heat it a little bit, but be very careful if you heat it. You can damage your propeller blades, so it's better if you can just twist it and make it take a set. So mine is wanting to skew off a little bit, so I'm going to remedy that. And then we will squirt glue down in the slot. And now, with that, propeller assembly is attached and happy. Now, the other way you can do this, um, the first thing you would want to do, these have a little bend back to make the end of the propeller shaft be really nice and easy on your hand so you don't jab yourself. The problem with that is 
you can't slide this through a typical bearing hole. So you would want to take a pair of uh, wire cutters and clip this off. And then, let me remove this one over here. Then you'll be left with just a regular hook right here. So what you would want to do is unbend the, um, the end of this wire slide the prop off and then you can slide it back on with the um, uh, with with the uh, uh, glass bead here removed from this bearing bend this end back over and now you have an assembly once you do that um, that can be placed on a typical aluminum bearing so we can simply at this point uh, slide our prop shaft in our aluminum bearing and then what we want to do is hook it over like so and now it's in and spins freely all right so i hope this has uh, provided you with some insight into how to use these uh, propellers the uh, last thing I should mention is that these, um, these carbon spars that we're using are 030 carbon rod or 0.8 millimeter. You can get it for uh, that carbon from us uh, through Windcatcher RC. Um, there are a few other vendors that have it. Uh, I recommend Windcatcher because they have excellent pricing, very quick delivery. But this is the procedure that I use to get these blades to handle a little more uh, higher wing loading uh, as well as more power and get them to be more consistent in their behavior. Uh, I, what I have found is that the smaller IFAS props don't really need this unless you're flying something heavy and the blades can break off. Uh, the small Icara props have the same problem and this is a solution I have used on those in the past as well. And then uh, the, the large uh, IFAS uh, flaring propellers, as well as the large Icara ones, uh, they, I think they have a little bit stiffer material that they're made out of, and so they also do not have this problem. So with that, I hope that uh, helps you gain some insight in how to, into how to use these propellers, and we'll see you later. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.